Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Sister podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Sister, all in word. I hope you had a wonderful week since I last recorded. I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for all the thoughts and prayers for my mom. I've had surgery. She is out of surgery, and she's doing well in recovery mode. And uh, my aunt came down to kind of help out and take care of her a little bit for the next couple weeks because she will not be able to walk at all because she had a full ankle replacement like everything down there um, replaced and I would have loved to have been able to be on call for two weeks but with little tiny ones and kids in school I couldn't really do it so I got to see my aunt who came down and so it's been great too but yeah I had the awesome privilege of being able to go to the knitting in the hills retreat this last weekend and so that's why I didn't record yesterday and my voice is still a little gone from it I'm going to take a sip of tea But I'm not going to talk a ton about the retreat this time since I'm doing my designer spotlight. I think I'll talk more about the retreat next time. But this teacup that I'm drinking out of is part of what I'll be talking about more next time because I was given it at the retreat. But it just so happens that I got to get an interview. I was brave. <laughs> and thank you everyone who told me to be brave and encouraged me in that respect. I was brave and I got a short little interview with Susan B. Anderson while I was at the retreat because she was one of the classes that I took, but I'll tell you about the class next time. So on to finished objects. I have one, except the ends still need to be sewn in, but I didn't bother to do that before I left for the retreat. And then I got back yesterday and just wanted to hang out with my family and catch up on some sleep because I never sleep well when I'm not at home. And so haven't done it yet. And that's why, also why I'm recording a day late, because I just was like, you know, you guys will understand, right? <laughs> You've all been at parts when you're tired or do you just want to spend time with your family. So this is the Windschief Hat by Stephen West. And I knit it out of some PhD yarns in the colorway Lab Notebook. And thank you so much, uh, Chris, Halsey Yarn, for telling me about the yarn, the yarn or I guess, oh, giving the yarn for me for the giveaway that I won for her podcast. Uh, it was great working with that. And my husband actually, I was having him try it on because it's not for him, it's a gift for someone else, probably a Christmas gift for my sister-in-law's boyfriend, if she's still dating him uh, at Christmas time. But I had my husband try it on, he was like, oh, I love it. I was like, you can't keep taking everybody's hats because every time I knit, try to knit a hat for another male in my family or my husband's family, he always, he tries it on and he's like, oh, I love that. And he wants one, but he really said that he loved this detail up front here that Stephen West has on his hat. So if you're ever looking for a guy or a girl hat pattern, I think this would be a great one because it's definitely my husband approved. And you can kind of see it is it just a pattern that goes out there. And I am going to block it a little bit to open that up. So that was my finished object. And then I cast on new things for Susan B. Anderson month. So my husband surprised me because my birthday, it's my birthday month. My birthday is St. Patrick's Day, which is March 17th, the lesser known holiday. And my husband surprised me with a Diana Couture yarn owl. And I think he has one more bag surprise coming for me. And it just has little four leaf clovers. I kind of told him I would like this one, so kind of a surprise not surprise but in here is a pattern that I was so kindly gifted by Aubrey and I think she gifted this to me sometime last year but it's the smooth operator socks by Susan B Anderson and having my pink and green together which I'm really liking right now but <laughs> I just have a tiny bit cast on I didn't even really work on these this weekend because I fell in love with one of the other projects but kind of stuck in there. I have it on some signature needles, which I never use these. I should use them more because they were a Mother's Day present, but uh, they really kind of hurt my hands after a little while, so I don't like to use them much. But they are green, it kind of matched the bag, and I thought I'd knit on them on this for a little while and then switch over to different DPNs, but yeah, just a tiny little cuff. Now, this tiny little cuff is yarn from one of my older skeins that I've been wanting to use up, and it's Fishnets 
and it's in their Canadiana colorway and it's done to where the yarn makes it look like blankets, I guess Canadian blankets that are kind of, but you can see in there a little bit. It has a white cuff and then it has these stripes of these different colors and then the entire sock is white and it does that again on the next sock. So I think it'll be a really good one to try the smooth operator sock because I can put in that afterthought heel, cut it in is what she has you do in the pattern. I can cut it in anywhere that will work out nicely. So that was the first Susan B. Anderson one. And I'll show you all the ones that I cast on and then I'll tell you a little bit about her and then hopefully we'll go into the interview. So next I will show you the one that I did with the class with her. And this is in an absolute wonder bag, which my friend, the bag maker is my friend Summer's mom. And in here is my wee little sheep. So I took a class with Susan B. Anderson on how to make her sheep. She's one of the toy masters of the knitting world along with shawls and other things. Oh, I meant to bring down, I have a shawl that I knit of hers. I can bring it next week and show you. But this is my sheep and I'm quickly running out of yarn. I have this little ball and it's an alpaca, kind of this taupey brown and then this fuzzier alpaca wool blend. This is like this chocolate brown and I just thought it would make a really nice looking natural sheep. Now if I run out, he may have to have like a pink head or a blue head or something, <laughs> but it'll be fun to have this little sheep guy that I got to knit in Susan's class. And I'm knitting them on some of my marbles needles. And that loop stitch that she has you do on the sheep, well, there were three different options on the sheep pattern of things you could do. You could do a Fair Isle sweater, you could do a wrapped stitch, and then you could do the loop stitch. And I chose the loop because I thought it would look wonderful with the yarn that I had picked up for that, which was just scraps. But the loop stitch did take a little bit of getting used to for me, but I really love the effect that it creates. Uh, the next and last of my cast-ons is the one that I completely fell in love with and just wanted to work on. And so this is in my Mrs. Brown's bag that Jody so kindly gifted to me around this time last year when I sent her some mustache yarn from the marketplace. And I need to send her a skein of my yarn, her and Tracy, as a thank you for this bag now that I'm making yarn so I have something I can kind of send back to her. But this is the one, two, three chickadee pattern, and I'm knitting it out of Quince and Co, just like Susan does in the pattern. So I will show you my three colors. So it's going first, just have a tiny bit left of this. The first color that I have been working on is this beautiful icy blue color. And I've done quite a bit on it. So yeah, I'm almost done. I'm almost one third of the way through the shawl because it has worked kind of asymmetrically in the diagonal. And it's lovely and squishy because it's a garter stitch sport weight. And I am enjoying this yarn a lot. It's my first time working with Quince and Co. And I really like it. And so this pattern, you can do tassels on it or not. And I am gonna do tassels. I'm gonna do the tassels in my second color so that the middle of the shawl will be on both ends as well. And this is Storm. That's gonna go next after that. And then that ice blue color is called Stream. And then the final color is another blue and it is called River. So, kind of how it's going to go. My mom might steal this because she really loves blues. It's kind of where I got my love of the color blue from was from my mom. So yeah, that is all the Susan B. Anderson things that I have to show you. I did work on my husband's socks and other things, but I just wanted to, for the sake of time, show the Susan B. Anderson ones and then I'll show you the others either next week or when they're done. But yeah, that's my one, two, three chickadee shawl. And 
So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the designer this month, who is Susan B. Anderson. I have got to meet her two, I've gotten to meet her two times and she remembered me this time, which was so sweet of her and so surprising, which just really shows how amazing she is because not only is she the kindest and sweetest person, but she's also very good at remembering people. I can't imagine how many people she encounters in all her classes and stuff, so I felt really touched that she said she remembered me from the, I took a, her class on designing shawls or shawl shapes at SSK 2015, which is a knitting retreat in Nashville. And that class was wonderful and really fun and getting to see her for the first time is really fun. I don't ever really get fangirlish or, you know, starstruck, but I did with Susan that first time and I was trying to tell her how much I loved her patterns and I, I think I just sounded so silly, but this time luckily I was much more composed and talked to her and, and it went really well and I got an interview like I said. So Susan is from, or currently lives in Madison, Wisconsin. She started off knitting, well, I don't know, I didn't ask her when she actually started her knitting, but I know that she started designing around 2000. 2003 and she talks about that a little bit in the video of kind of I asked her you know what does she love about designing or well, when did what made her start designing and I actually have I believe what was her first book I should have brought it down the itty bitty hats collection that she did is little hats of different for babies and I knit a whole bunch out of there I really love the upside down daisy hat I believe and the pumpkin hat things like that. So those are a couple that I've knit from there. And she has a blog, which is wonderful and just so very charming. I, I always look at her blog and I, while I love to have, sorry, my ice maker. Well, I love to have very like minimalism kind of things around me. I always love looking at her, her blog because there's so many cute, quaint things and it's just, it's so charming. And I think that that's very much like her aesthetic and just like charming and beautiful little things to add to your knitting that you can do. So she does a lot of toys. She works for Quince & Co and does a lot of different shawls out of their yarns like the 123 Chickadee. I've done her, she did a Yowza Away It where she worked with Miss Babs and did a lot there. And she has started her own yarn company recently. I believe it's Barrett Wool. And she gave me a coupon for getting some percent off because I'm hoping since it's my birthday month to get some more yarn. And I want to use it to get some yarn for a Christmas present for a friend because I think her Barrett Wool will show up cables beautifully in a worsted weight scarf. And so, yeah, she's just so sweet. And she designs tons of stuff. She really has some great books to work with kids and teaching kids how to knit and it's called kids workshop and yeah her she's just she had all her stuff laid out for class with all the little toys I've made her dragon toy I made that for one of my friends who loves dragons I made it for her birthday and she just has a lot of great patterns and a really good variety and she's just one of the sweetest people I've ever met and so hopefully right now you will be seeing a very short because I didn't want to take up too much of her time since she was so graciously donating it to me a little one minute I believe video of me interviewing her and there you know it was just great to get to do that so thank you again so she said she watched she's watched my podcast which was also like I probably turned bright red I was like thank you and she said it was good so that was just so sweet Susan so thank you I don't know if she'll be watching this episode I can't imagine how busy she is with teaching knitters everywhere around the world but yeah I just thank you Susan and thank you so much again for the interview I really enjoyed getting to spend a tiny little bit of the Saturday of the retreat with you okay so here is that hopefully so this is Susan B Anderson and we're here at the Hill Country Weavers Knitting in the Hills Retreat and I just took a sheep class and I just want to ask you Susan what's your favorite thing about designing or what made you start designing? Well when I first started knitting I knit for probably a good 20 years or something or maybe 15 years and I just knitted other people's patterns and I really didn't have any desire to um, umbrella. <laughs> we have a lost umbrella so someone's yeah. coming to grab it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's okay. So, bye. And so, um, 
after um, I had kids, I started designing these great little baby hats just from scratch. I would just come up with the pattern myself and people went crazy over them and it eventually became my first book, which I is Itty Bitty book. Hats. And that's really how it all started. I just started taking a basic hat shape and adding things and expanding it and shaping it different ways and making bunny ears and all this fun stuff. And it just really inspired me to keep going. And then I just kept going and going from there and adding in new design projects. And um, that's kind of how it all started. Okay, well, thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks for having me. Now we're back and I don't have any spinning this week because like I said, I just was at the retreat and getting ready for the retreat and trying to dye up some yarn before and get out packaging orders and things like that. So spinning hopefully tomorrow, <laughs> hoping to spin some tomorrow. But then we have group news. We have two giveaways that just ended we had the mina's knitting expat has her new york sock collection club where socks come out every month and the one for march has already come out and i think i know my yarn that i'm going to use for it i'm going to try to if not knit a sock every month at least cast them on every month which might end up with me having a ton of whips at the end but i really just want to try to join in a little bit if i can since she was so kind and gifted me her club but the winner for Mina's Pattern Book Club of New York sock collection was post number 53, Carrie Ann 77. And it was chosen, chosen by Siri on my phone. I said, hey Siri, pick a random. <laughs> and then we had another giveaway called the Be Kind and it's talking about the change that you would like to see in the world. And that one was for a skein of yarn which I showed that a while ago and a cute little notebook with a flying bird on the front and the winner for that was number post number 15 Cthulhu loves me and so yeah just contact me when you see this and I will get those in the mail to you and I have a new giveaway coming up which is probably the big I think it is the biggest giveaway that I have ever done for the podcast It has yarn and a project bag and some tea. And it was just my way of kind of trying to take you to the retreat with me. I always love to get some special things from the retreat or the festival that I go to to share with you guys. And since I had birthday money to spend, I didn't want to spend all my birthday money on myself. So I got you guys a big um, prize package. So I thought that would be really fun to kind of, since I had birthday money, get you guys a bigger prize. So. That will be, I'll be showing that next week along with stuff I got for me from, for my birthday and the stuff that came in the goodie bag from the retreat and talking all about the retreat next weekend. But if you would like to go ahead and enter for the giveaway because you know that whatever it is you would love, yarn, bag, and tea, I will probably go ahead and put the thread up and then show you next week what the actual prize looks like because I know I said that I would be doing a new giveaway so I'll just go up and put that up. And since the, the speaker on Saturday night was, I believe, I'm gonna get her name wrong, and I know I'm pretty sure she's famous in the knitting, commun tele knitting television community, but I don't really watch television. Um, I believe her name is Vicki Howell. I'm so sorry if I'm getting that wrong. I will correct myself or say I was right next week when I talk about everything. But she talked about why we make. And so the prompt for this giveaway is going to be, why do you make? I would love to hear about either what started you knitting or why you continue knitting or anything like that. I knit because it's a very good stress relief for me. I also feel that there's nothing quite like seeing someone, your husband, your child, your niece, nephew, grandchildren in something that you've hand knit them or hugging a stuffed animal that you've hand knit them. There's just, it's such an amazing feeling which you might knit because your mother taught you or to carry on family tradition, or you might knit because you love to knit for charities. I mean, there's so many wonderful reasons that we all do what we do, and I would really love for you to share them with me in the post there. So that's the way to enter for this giveaway. Like I said, it'll be open for a while, so if you don't want to enter till you see what the yarn and bag and tea are, then you can wait till next week because it'll still be open. But that is it for the group news that I can think of. 
I opened up a sweater FO thread. I'm gonna open up a chatter sweater thread for the knit along that we are doing with Tiffany and Knitting at Tiffany's and Aaron of Blinger Strings, Serafina's Abby. And uh, I need to open up the Susan B. Anderson thread, but there's a bunch of threads I need to open up. I need to make a list and just kind of check those up. And I really wanna open up a goals for the week thread because that's kind of motivating to me. But yeah, for enabling this week, because I got this wonderful package in the mail all the way from Switzerland, I did not want to do the enabling of the retreat too, because I just kind of wanted to separate them out so I didn't have so much to talk about in the podcast to go on for a while, or that I was trying to rush through things and not do this beautiful package that was sent to me justice. So her name, her name on Instagram, I don't know if her Ravelry name is this as well, but Elisa0101 from Switzerland had won, I believe, a pattern prize. I think she'd won some of the prize on the podcast and she wrote to me and said that she would like to send me, since she's in a different part of the world and can get different yarns than I can, that she would love to send me a package with some yarns that were near her. And I couldn't just let her send me something because I wanted to, you know, I like to give back too, so I wanted to. Sw I said, "Can we swap?" And she so kindly said yes, and that makes me feel better because I just the one pattern that she has won was definitely not worth this amazing box of wonderfulness that she sent me, and I sent hers off way later, way way later than she sent mine. But I think it's still because she sent this in January and I just got it today, so I think it took about six or seven weeks to get here international mail must be being really slow right now so hopefully your package will get to you sometime in March and or early April and you'll really love it because I had fun putting that together for you but let me share with you what she put in my package so I have this wonderful card kind of reminds me it's like a it says plum blossoms but it's you know you have the is that the kanji, I believe it's kanji. I don't, I think this is Chinese, not, not Japanese. It, it doesn't look, doesn't look Japanese to me. It's definitely not here to cook. Anyways, you don't, <laughs> you don't care about that. But so she sent some, are they, are they cookies or crackers? I believe they're I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't tasted them yet, as you can see. So, and I really don't know any Swedish at all. <laughs> I probably, I, I may know thank you in it if I really thought hard, because I like to know at least hello and thank you in all the languages, but I can't recall it right now. But then, oh my goodness. I don't even know how to show, I'll show the yarn last. She sent this little, inf it looks like tea. Yes, <laughs> there's an English side and a not English side, only I read. So she sent this lovely little tea and it was a herbal tea, a nightly tea, nightly ritual. And then she sent some rose tea, it's by, the, by the same Love Organic. And then she sent some more yummy tea, Pure Happiness. And it won the Great Taste Award 2015. And it just has this cute little drawing on it of a horse. So that's that tea. And then it's so funny, I laughed when I saw that she had sent this in mind because I sent her some of this. She sent me some Tuft Woolens uh, chapstick, which is so funny because I had sent her a couple of things from Tuft Woolens. Or maybe it was just the bar of soap. I either sent her like soap and lotion or soap and a, something. But yeah, I had sent her tough woolens. And then, oh my gosh. Yay, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I have my very first skein of Nora George yarn. It's like birthday month is starting right now. <laughs> it's just, it's, I'm so happy to get to try some of this. Her, her label just, 
makes me want to like sit down with my cup of tea and just look at it and smile because it's it's very calming to me but this yarn is inspired by Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire where there's a wand there is a way my son is rapidly reading through the seventh book and I just I hugged him as soon as I got home from the retreat because while I was gone, spoiler alert if you haven't read Harry Potter, Dumbledore died in the book that he was reading and I was like, oh buddy, I wish I were there to hug you, to give you a hug after Dumbledore died, but hug you as soon as I get home. And so these are going to be socks for my son because I think I'll try and start, well I might not be able to start them by the time he finishes the seventh because he's just going through them and I am so happy. It, I can't tell you how, I think I have told you numerous times how happy I am seeing him hefting that big book around even though I'm pretty sure he's breaking the spine. <laughs> so there's that. Thank you so much and my son thanks you in the future for the socks he's going to get. And then there's some stranded dye works in the castaway and this is, what is it called? Castaway. Maybe the base is castaway. But this is the Industrial Kingfisher base, and it's 246 yards and a DK. And it's nice and squishy. And I think that well, might be a hat for my son too, because these are his favorite colors, blue and orange. And then this one makes my heart sing. It's so, so pretty. And it's Cosmic Strings, which is one I'd never heard of. And I'm so glad that she sent this because I love it. It's called Mermaid and it is just so stunning. It's dyed in Edinburgh and there's an Edinburgh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival coming up soon, which I am not, I've never, I've never been out of the country since being an adult, sadly. I hope to leave someday because, you know, b being madly in love with languages and having nine different languages that I'm currently studying and a different, I'm more fluent in others than some, but yeah, I would like to leave the country and go to some of the countries where I've been learning, like French, I've been learning since high school, and Russian, I've been learning for forever, shortly after college, so I, I would love to go travel, and everybody getting to go to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I hope you have a wonderful time, and I'm slightly jealous. <laughs> so yeah, mermaid. And then, Another yarn that I've heard of, but I've never gotten to try. This is just so fun. Thank you so much for swapping with me. I, this is like one of the most fun swaps I've ever had. And she is largely because she's the most awesome swapper and just sent me amazingly wonderful yarns that I've never gotten to try. So Baron Wulle, I, am, I know a little bit of German that I'm learning because I've been studying it. If this were water, I could say, ich trink Wasser. <laughs> and at ich, right now I could say, ich bin müde, which I believe is, I am tired. But I am tired, so I probably am getting my German pronunciation really bad right now, and I apologize to all of those of you who are in Germany and watch. But this is Baron Wool, and it's a sock yarn, 8020, and it's in the Neapolitan. Just gonna be socks for me. Ooh, this I'm sorry. This might work for Mina's first sock, even though I already have the color that I was gonna use planned out, but I think this would work great with that sock pattern that she just put out for March too. And then the last one is some Martin's Lab. And this is another wonderful DK. And I this is in the seashells colorway, but it's a merino silk and yak. And I don't believe, I could be wrong, because I can always be wrong, but I don't believe I've ever knit with Yak, and I'm excited. This is gonna be a gorgeous maybe hat and fingerless mittens. There's there's enough, oh, but it's so soft. And I think the Yak, I've heard that the Yak should make it very, very warm. So yay, thank you again so much for swapping with me, and I hope you love your package. I wanna like, Maybe close your ears and don't listen and I'll tell people kind of what I sent you. Okay, so close your ears for a second so you don't hear, but I sent her a skein of, I tried to pick ones that were kind of popular around here that she might know, so I sent her. If you, if you, don't, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't listen. So I sent her a skein of Desert Vista Dye Works 
and then I sent her my only skein of this that I'd been just holding on to, not knitting because it was just so precious, and I decided to let it go and to have somebody that could love it and knit it instead of just hopefully holding it precious, but my only skein of wool and vine yarns. That was the only one I had. I got it a couple years ago, and I've just been having it sitting there being so beautiful. So maybe one day again, I'll get a skein of wool and vine. And then I sent some self-striping sock yarn. Well, the Desert Vista dye works with self-striping sock yarn. But I sent, oh, did I send what? I'm trying to remember. I sent some Neely's Knits. Neely's Knits is wonderful. So hopefully she really likes her package. And that is the swap I did. So thank you so much. Oh, Nora George. I'm so excited. And Baron will, I'm, I'm so excited. So thank you. It's just a wonderful start to my birthday month. And now, I believe the last thing is the book. And so thank you so much to everyone who said to stop reading the book that I was liking. Sorry to everyone who said to stop reading the book I was like, I'm so stubborn. Now I know some people may love this book and I wanna preface this with anybody who's watched the epi early episodes of the podcast or any will know, I think I've reviewed a couple of his, that I love this author. I love him and I've read all of his books and I, I plan to read all of his books. I've read most of his books and I don't understand what maybe he was going through some relationship stuff and he felt that he just needed to act out some stuff in the book to like keep from being lonely but he just acted out way too much and he could have cut out like 70% of this book and the story would have still been there. I could probably, I think I said last week, read Fifty Shades of Grey and it will be faster and less. Oh my gosh, but the book that I am almost done with and not liking is the 1Q84 which made me think, okay, this book is kind of loosely Japanese, or Haraku, Haraki Murakami's response to 1984 by George Orwell, which is a much better book. And has, it has a current resurgence in popularity, according to a lot of different things that I've seen. So I'm gonna review that book. So 1984 by George Orwell. And I read this book forever ago, but basically it is a dystopian novel which deals with a world in which, I think they coined the phrase Big Brother is watching you from this book, but everything is so systematic in what you have to do, your job, where you can go, what you can eat, what you can buy, what you can do. And it's basically controlled by this leader who has a lot of fear and hatred and you can't just go and have a baby if you want to. And you know, it you it's not encouraged to have loving relationships. You know, if it's it's just a very interesting. I'm not going to go too much into it because I don't want to spoil the plot, and I believe probably a lot of people have read it, so it's going to be a short book review, but if you haven't read it and you enjoy dystopian books, and you like classics, I would say very highly read 1984 by George Orwell. And it just takes a very interesting look at some characters who kind of decide that they're not going to go with this, this horrible, rigid life that has been placed in front of them and required of them, and they're going to break out. And stuff doesn't always go well for people that try to break out of things and sometimes it does go well so you'll have to read the book to find out but anyways that is 1984 by george orwell orwell sorry and yeah that is everything i have for this week and next week i'll be back to show you the awesome giveaway and to talk about the retreat more so until next time i hope you have a great week and you get to do all the things you love okay bye guys